Hello, hello, you beautiful souls. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle. We talk all things life, love, spirituality, law of attraction, all of that juicy goodness. In this video, I am going to teach you how to discern between your intuition and the mind slash the ego. So if you're not familiar with what the ego is, the ego is our mind. It is the aspect of our being that was created in childhood to protect us. The mind keeps us, keeps us safe. The ego, if we're driving along the road and all of a sudden we start to cross the yellow lines or we're, supposed, we're about to drive near a curb, our ego will jump in and say, watch out, don't hit that curb. Or if we're about to go through a big change in our life, our ego will say, no, don't do that. Stay in your box, stay comfortable. Your ego doesn't like change. It doesn't like you to rear off the road to try new things or to explore things. Yes, it keeps us safe and protects us, but it also is very, very scared and it doesn't want us to experience change. It likes to know what's going on. It likes to predict the future and it likes to be right. <laughs> so take away those three things and you're left with the unknown. And when we're in the unknown, that's when our soul takes over, our intuition, which is over here. And we start to be guided. And when you're on a spiritual journey, when you're manifesting, when you're learning how to make better choices in your life, we have to tune in to our intuition. And how do we discern between a thought that's saying we should do something and a thought that's saying we shouldn't? How do we know which one's our intuition and which one is our ego? And this is the advice I'm going to give you. So anytime you're about to make a big decision in your life, I want you to pause, hand on your heart, hand on your belly, breathe for about two to three minutes and just get your central nervous system to be super, super calm. And I even do this when I lose something in my house and I have to go search for it. I'll pause, I'll calm my body down, I'll breathe for a little bit. And then when I feel like I'm in a restful state, I'll ask myself that question, Michelle, where did you put that document? Or where is your wallet? <laughs> I never lose my wallet, but some people do. Or do you know, should I move out or should I get a different job? And whatever the first thought is that pops into your mind, that is usually your heart. That is usually your intuition. It's a soft whisper. It's like a, yep, we should do this or no, that's not right. The thoughts <laughs> that jump in afterward and start to tell you all the reasons why you shouldn't do the thing or all the reasons why it's not going to feel good or you should be scared or you're not going to have enough money or you shouldn't take that risk. That's all the ego. The ego comes in and comments on the initial thought. The soul knows what you're going to be doing. The soul wants to tell you what to do, but the ego will jump in and find all the ways to pull you away from doing that thing because that thing is your desire. It is taking you to your desires. So here's a little story. So I was teaching for about 17 years and near the end of my career, I was waking up each day knowing that I needed to leave teaching. But I would always have this other thought that would pop in and say, Michelle, how are you gonna pay your bills? This is not logical. Michelle, be smart. Don't be reckless. Don't make a stupid decision. You know, be a good human being, like have another job lined up and, you know, get all your ducks in a row first. And I was so torn because my heart and my intuition was saying, you can't do this another minute, Michelle. This is not where you're supposed to be. I would wake up and have that thought at like two or three in the morning. And then 8 a.m. would roll around and it would be like all the reasons why I shouldn't do it this is stupid. How are you going to pay your bills? And it was just constantly commentating on this idea of what my heart wanted to do. And more of my ego would say, the, the students need you. You can't leave them. You're a terrible person for abandoning these kids. What kind of teacher leaves in the middle of a school year? But I would be at the job like dying. <laughs> I, my body was physically in pain. I, I even would start to teach and my, I swear, the universe, my guides, my angels, whatever is controlling what's coming out of my mouth right now, it would not give me the words. I would be standing in front of a class of juniors in high school, 
wanting to teach about nutrition or something, and I would lose my train of thought all the time. It's like my guides were pulling the information from me to say, you're not supposed to be doing this right now. I felt crazy. That is how bad I resisted (laughs) my intuition saying quit because I didn't trust it. What was I supposed to do? I didn't know how to pay my bills if I didn't have that job, but it got so bad because I kept ignoring my intuition and I kept listening to my ego that it got so bad that I was literally doing the job and not doing a good job. And sometimes, you know, people think that they self-sabotage and then the universe kind of kicks you out or some people get fired. Usually it's because they're not listening to that intuitive nudge. And sometimes we have to not follow our intuition to learn this lesson. I had to learn. (laughs) I will never do that again. I will always follow my intuition because I've taken many leaps of faith in my life. And this one was the biggest one. I ended up resigning from teaching in November. It was the middle of the school year. I said, I got to do it. My body is literally telling me I can't do this anymore. I resigned. I did not have a set income in place, but after that happened, opportunities started to arrive a couple of weeks later. I, I went to a lunch with a friend and she was like, Hey, you should work at this place called the center life and balance where they practice Reiki and you can do your readings there and, and all these cool things. And I was like, okay, this is my next step. I quickly called the place and I said, hi, are you hiring? How does this work? Do I rent a space? And the woman called me back a week later I got a space there. I rent a room in this cute Victorian home. They put me on their website within a week of that whole interaction from me getting that message from my friend, that breadcrumb. And then I took action a week later, the lady called me back within a month. I was working there and I was on their website and I was getting clients and I was making (laughs) the same amount of money per week that I was making teaching. It took about two months to get that ball rolling, but within two months, and a good thing I had money in my savings to pay my rent for two months. And and side note, everybody should always have three to six months of savings, monthly expenses saved as like a safety net for yourself in case you need to do something like this, or God forbid something happened. You should always have three to six months of your expenses saved and don't touch it. So I used my savings, which I was grateful to have. Um, And then within two months, I was equaling my salary from teaching. I had to get my own health insurance. I had to do all that stuff, which I was a little bit like shaky doing it. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing for the first time in 17 years. I'm self-employed. How do I do this? But I had to follow that intuitive thought. I always point over here because it's just that feminine energy. You sit there and you listen. The left side is feminine. You receive a download and you take action on it. If you are listening to this right now and you're struggling between, you don't know what your intuition and what your ego, your ego will sound scared. It will be fearful. It will be um, doing anything it can to kind of keep you where you're at. Your soul and your intuition will be risky. It'll be like, yeah, you can do this. Like, you'll be fine. Trust me, trust me. It's It's a sweet little whisper. It will sound adventurous. It will sound like freedom. Like me quitting my job felt so good. The idea of it, to wake up and not have to go somewhere, to just finally not have to work for somebody else. That felt like freedom. It felt like an adventure. That's what my soul was calling me to do. But my mind, the logical part of Michelle was like, what are you nuts? You can't do this but we can. The universe is leading us. If we get the download, if we get the intuitive thought, it's the very first thought that comes to your head. And then there's other thoughts that comment. That's the mind. If you listen to the first thought and you just take one small step, it just took me waking up one day, sending a text to one of my coworkers saying, I think I'm going to resign today. And she was like, do it. She's like, you don't want to come back here. It's not a good space for you. You're not healthy here. I want you to do this. I wrote my letter. I hit send. Oh, I felt so good. And yes, it was a little scary because I was in the unknown. I didn't know what was going to come next, but the freedom I felt with relieving my body of that stress and that pain was something I cannot put into words. And that's how you know it's your intuition. And that's how you know it's it's your soul leading you because your body will feel good. So if you are trying to discern between, and I pulled a card for all of you, for this video. It's the wolf card. It says heart medicine, let go of that, which does not serve your highest good. 
So if you are feeling the call to let go of something, whether it's a habit, whether it's a relationship, I invite you to take the first step. I promise you, you can leap. You can take this first step. The universe will come swoop in with a magic carpet that you're going to land on. And the unfolding is going to be so beautiful. How my life has unfolded since I quit my job has been nothing but magic. People have showed up. Money has showed up so magically. I built my own website. I started YouTube. I started doing all of the things that I guess were deep inside of me that I was shoving down. And because that anxiety was building at my job, it's like, that's my creativity was trying to come out. And it was like, Michelle, it's time to be out there. It's time to take up space in the world in a different way. And I had to let go of something in order to let that fly out of me. If I didn't let go of my job, I wouldn't be here doing this. And I find so much joy in doing this now. I I wake up and I feel excited to film. I feel excited to, to pull cards and to do my page pulls and to see what messages are out there that you guys need to hear. This is my service now. So if you're not quite sure what your service is, but you're at a job that you know is not good, trust me, you can take the leap. Believe me, it will all work out. And if you need help, you can book a session with me. I would love to guide you through. I will be able to look at your situation and maybe guide you on when is the right time to do it. Um, Because there are things we have to be smart about. Like I was at least, I had a little bit of savings for me to lean on for a little bit, but don't get me wrong. I was scared because what if that money ran out and I didn't have something, but the universe won't let that happen. Okay. That's where we have to have faith and know that, you know, it does show up for us. And I'm here to tell you it will. So discerning between your intuition and the ego, the intuition is the first thought. It's a beautiful little whisper. It's adventurous. It's fun. It's a little risky. The mind will be a protection mechanism. It will tell you all the reasons why you shouldn't do it. It will want to keep you safe. And your intuition could be something as simple as you're sitting on the couch and you get a quick thought that says, I should go work out. That's your intuition. The mind will jump in and say, oh, well, then I'll have to shower afterwards, or then I'm not going to have enough time to go to the food store, or then I got to get changed. The ego will find every excuse not to do it. Your job, hear the thought and just take action. It's inspired action. Just do it. Just like Nike says, just freaking do it. All right, lovies. I hope you enjoyed this little mini lesson about your intuition versus your ego. It can be very, very difficult, but always quiet the central nervous system down, tune in and ask yourself the big question. Your body will tell you, your heart will speak to you. You just have to get quiet enough to hear it and know (laughs) that it will be scary. That's part of the risk, but watching the unfolding, the red carpet that gets rolled out for you after you make the decision is why we're alive. It is the whole purpose of life is to see how we are protected and we are guided. So like, comment below and tell me your adventure story. Tell me about your leaps of faith. Tell me if you're struggling with listening to your intuition or your ego. And be sure to hit the bell so you know when more of my videos come out. Thank you so much for being here. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out.